I think stocks and bonds will both rally eventually. Um, that's that's what the big call is. That's what I think happens. Mm. So I think stocks and bonds rally, as I said, uh, um, technology, crypto rally the most. If I just look down my Bloomberg right now, you know, the S&P is up 8%. The Nasdaq's up 25%. I've been, you know, I've been saying this since last year. and Everyone thought I was crazy. The exponential age basket that I talked about in Real Vision that everyone thought I was a complete idiot for, that's up about 40% this year. Um, and, um, you know, crypto, which everybody thought was completely dead, is up 50, 60, 70%, depending what you're looking at. Stuff like Solana is up 120%. While skepticism surrounding Bitcoin and the broader crypto landscape is not unwarranted, especially for those residing in the United States, our conviction in the potential of this digital revolution remains unshaken. We firmly believe that behind the scenes, momentous advancements are taking place within the industry, particularly in the realm of the granddaddy of all cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. These groundbreaking developments have the power to reshape the future and hold immense promise for those who steadfastly dedicate themselves to this space. Let us seek to unravel the transformative trends and illuminating possibilities that lie just ahead, paving the way toward a more prosperous and promising future for Bitcoin and its passionate advocates. The transformative trends in the crypto industry hold immense promise for those who recognize the potential of Bitcoin and commit themselves to its advancement. By staying informed, engaging in responsible investing practices, and embracing the evolving ecosystem, individuals can position themselves at the forefront of this digital revolution. The journey toward a more prosperous and promising future for Bitcoin and its advocates involves continuous learning, collaboration, and adaptation. Raul Pal, a prominent investor and economist, has extensively discussed and analyzed the exponential age and its implications. He emphasizes the transformative power of exponential technologies and their potential to reshape industries, create new business opportunities, and drive economic growth. Powell believes that understanding and adapting to the exponential age is crucial for individuals, businesses, and governments to thrive in the face of rapid change. The term exponential age is often used to describe the current era characterized by rapid technological advancements and the exponential growth of various industries. It refers to a time when technological progress, particularly in areas such as artificial intelligence, robotics, biotechnology, and blockchain, is transforming multiple aspects of society and the economy. In the exponential age, innovations and disruptions occur at an unprecedented pace, leading to significant shifts in how we live, work, and interact. In this video, Raul Powell shares his latest views and update on the state of the markets, including crypto. Before we listen to him, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. Thanks for watching our videos. I've had a very strong view for a while, which was that liquidity was everything. And I wrote all of this up in that everything code that I've talked a bit about that interview with Nathaniel Whittingmore. I went through quite a lot of what the everything code is, um, but that's still kind of exclusive to GMI. But liquidity is everything. All of my forward looking indicators have been suggesting that liquidity is going to keep rising and that it would drive crypto and tech more than anything else. And that's basically been the story of the year so far. Um, and I think that that continues. And that's confused a lot of people. The one trade that's confused me is the bond trade, and that's confused a lot of people. Bond yields should have fallen by now, and they still haven't. But I think this is to do with the debt ceiling issue, which is the other confusing thing. Because the debt ceiling issue has some real risks around it. And we don't really know how to price them. All we do know is people are pretty bearish around it. Um, and I think that's reasonable, too, to have hedged around it, because we don't know what can happen. But the chances are that anything that causes a paralysis of financial markets will lead to that, that expression I always use, more cowbell, more stimulus to come. So I'm going to run through a couple of charts very quickly just to show some of the things that are on my radar screen so people can think about. So this is the Global Macro Investor Le Weekly Liquidity Index. That's basically around the G5 central bank balance sheets. That we have our financial conditions index, which is based around the dollar rates um, and a whole bunch of other stuff, which leads this, as does ISM. And it suggests that liquidity is going to keep rising all the way through this year. And the everything code suggests it actually keeps rising all the way through till the end of 2025. So yes, we might have some stumbling blocks. Yes, we might have some hurdles. But liquidity going forwards, as the economy slows down, and the central banks start 
increasing their activity, that will drive asset prices higher. So that's the first chart I wanted to show you. So that's the liquidity chart. Why liquidity matters is this chart. This is the chart of the NASDAQ against that same liquidity index. That's the tightest correlation I've ever seen. And it explains 97.5% of all the movements in the NASDAQ is liquidity. Mm -hmm. And this is around this currency debasement idea. The more the central banks print, the more you're changing the denominator, not the actual value of the asset themselves. So again, the only assets that have really gone up in balance sheet terms are technology, the NASDAQ, and other like the exponential age stocks, and crypto. Also, actually, interesting enough, so is luxury goods. That there's a reason Bernard Arnault is the richest man in the world, is because what does he sell? He sells scarcity, right? In a world where you're de devaluing the denominator, scarce things go up more in price. So Bernard Arnault's balance sheet, um, his um, bank account goes up every week. So that's another chart for you to show. This is speculative positioning in the S and P 500. I have literally never seen anything like it. So. The market is insanely bearish, mm. which is why we the Nasdaq's up 1.8% today, because people just don't want to believe it. They're angry. They want the market to go down. They want their bear market, and they want their justice, and it's not happening. And the reason being is everybody's ridiculously, ludicrously short. On the flip side of the equation, we're going into this, and that's obviously driven by the debt ceiling. The other side of the debt ceiling is this chart, which is the speculative positioning in bonds. Now, bonds, as I mentioned before, have not been playing ball. I thought yield should be falling, but they haven't yet. But look what's going on here. This is the largest speculative short positioning in the history of the bond market. So if anything changes at the margin here, we're going to see a gigantic rally in bonds, which I'm still expecting, but this whole debt ceiling dynamic is getting in the way. Inflation dynamics, on the, mean, on, the, um, on the other hand, are falling very fast. Things like the Truflation Index, which is a real-time calculation on chain of millions of prices, suggests that US CPI as of today is 3.2%. Uh, I think it still goes to zero by June or July, which Alex Gurevich has been talking about both on Real Vision and also on Twitter as well. We're very in a small camp of that. We're also seeing wage growth coming down. We're seeing rents, are, rent, rents and wages are the most lagging of all. Um, so they're all still to come down. So generally speaking, economy slowing. We've got this whole debt ceiling stuff that's getting people very nervous. The resolution of that one way or the other ends up being ongoing liquidity as the economy slows. The banking issues have slowed down for the time being, but doesn't mean it's gone away. These things tend to come in phases. Technology and crypto tend to outperform. Crypto has been um, consolidating for a while, but it's still up 50, 60 percent on the year, still the best performing asset. But again, it's likely to pick up as liquidity comes forward, as shown by our forward looking liquidity indicators. And we've probably got 20 or 30 different things we could show you to say that liquidity is going up. So yeah. I remain massively bullish. There will be a correction at some point in all of this. As people start throwing in the towel in the short positions, then we might get a, a correction before we continue to move higher um, later on in the summer. So overall, super bullish. The only one that's puzzling me is the bond market still hasn't played ball. But I think we need to get through this debt ceiling thing. And then a lot of hedges get unwound. What do you make of Raul Powell's interview? Are you bullish as he is? Do you believe that a correction is on the horizon? We are interested in hearing your opinion. Thanks for watching. Till our next video, stay savvy.